On today's show, the Golden State Warriors even the series two games apiece with the Sacramento Kings. How did Steph Curry respond being down 0-2 for the first time in his career? What needs to happen for the Warriors to win the non-Steph Curry minutes in this series? What adjustments can we expect ahead of Game 5? What needs to happen for the Warriors to be able to win one in Sacramento? All that and more coming up right here at Locked On NBA. You are Locked On NBA, your daily NBA podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome to another edition of Locked On NBA, the biggest stories with the local experts. I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, also host of Locked On Rockets right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Now, today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Next game, how about Jason Tatum to score more than 26.5 points? What about LeBron James to have more than 7.5 rebounds? How about Kevin Durant to have less than 6.5 assists? Or what about Steph Curry to have more than 3.5 three-pointers made? So what is Price Picks? It's daily fantasy sports, but how does it work? Basically, you pick two to six players, and if they score more or less than their Price Picks projection, you can win up to 25 times back into your money on any entry that you submit. There's no competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. And Price Picks offers projections on any sport that you watch. That's NBA, NFL, MLB, NHL, PGA. They've got you covered for all of the action over at Price Picks. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that simple. They're safe. They offer fast withdrawals. Currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. So download the PrizePick app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, bucks, Price Picks will give you $100. Bucks. If you deposit $50, Price Picks will give you $50. So don't forget to enter promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Joining us now is the host of Locked On Warriors, Cyrus Satsa, as you can find wherever you listen to your podcasts and on YouTube. Just search Locked On Warriors and Cyrus for the first time in the Steph Curry era. After going down 0-2, right? It's never happened before in the Curry era. The Warriors, they come back to even the series, two games apiece against the Sacramento Kings, holding on for the 126-125 Game 4 win at home. Cyrus, Steph, had, he had 36 in Game 3, then 32 here in Game 4. How have you seen him and really the, the entire team as a whole kind of respond after going down 0-2 here against the Kings? Um, I mean, I don't think many people are that surprised just because the Warriors all season have been such a dominant home team. Uh, and it's been a complete antithesis to how they are as a road team where they're just absolutely awful. Um, so the, the fact that they've evened things up, the fact that, uh, you know, they're, they're a much more experienced team. Um, some of the inexperience of the Kings has been showing in these games three and four and vice versa. Um, not that surprising, uh, but it sure as hell sets up a really big and pivotal game five. Absolutely. And I, I think one of the bigger storylines here from game four and kind of, you know, stretching in even back to game three right, is Draymond Green, right? Suspended for game three. Then he comes back for game four and Steve Kerr decides to bring him off the bench in what I think was a bit of a, a surprising move. So, I mean, what did you think about that decision from Kerr and, and subsequently, how do you think Draymond handled coming off the bench in this game? Well, I think Draymond in the post game actually said that uh, the, the bench, uh, uh, the whole concept was his idea. He suggested it to Kerr, I guess, based off the fact that he saw just how good the Warriors played without him in game three. Um, and he used the old adage, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, so he basically just proposed the idea to Kerr and, and Kerr ran with it. A huge reason being it just immediately bolsters the bench. Um, you know, I mean, Draymond Green as as a bench player really just changes a lot of facets of your team as a whole. Um, I mean, but the, the, the whole, the experiment was very short lived. Uh, he did start the third quarter um, with the usual starting five. And and I don't envision this going, I don't envision him coming off the bench again, um, but it worked to a certain degree. And uh, it was a, it was a marvelous defensive performance from Draymond that that's for sure. You talk about the the bench versus starters minutes here, but I guess one of the one of the other issues this series for the Warriors have been the Steph versus non Steph minutes. Where when Steph's on the floor, they're plus forty three. When he's not on the floor, it hasn't been great. So what needs to happen to be able to maybe not even win those non Steph minutes, but just not be hurt so badly when Steph is off the floor? Yeah, and you know there is one game that's an exception to that, which is Game Three. The Warriors actually um, did okay in Game Three. And I thought a huge reason why there was an anomaly there were in whereas in game three, the, the team as a whole played great. They dominated that game winning by 17. Um, 
is that the Warriors play use their personnel who are longer, uh, more athletic. Uh, and I'm very surprised we didn't see much of that tonight. And, and I think that's it or today. And I think that's that's a huge reason why the team once again struggled in terms of those minutes without Steph, why they gave up 69 first half points. I mean, that's awful uh, when it comes to defense and, and why it was such a close game. I know that I know everyone's going to look at that uh, Stephen Curry timeout, which basically gave the Kings four points and closed the Warriors five point lead to one. Um, but a huge part of this, too, is and, you know, this is Steve Curry's the head coach, but he he keeps opting to not use Jermichael Green, a, a player who can easily handle Alex Len, of all people. Like like Alex Len today was uh, the, the Kings outscored the Warriors 24-12 in the period from the late first to the middle of the second when Alex Len played. And Steve Kerr is just on matching that size. I mean, Alex Len is seven feet, and today he matched it with Draymond, who's 6'5", 6'6". Whereas in game three, you had Jermichael Green, who's 6'9", and uh, and just has a really powerful physique. You have Jonathan Kaminga, who played 13 minutes in game three, uh, successfully at that. Today, he only played two minutes and change. Um, and then Moses Moody, who has been, uh, I thought, I think, unbelievable this whole series. Uh, and tonight, we saw him playing in limited minutes again, five minutes, 22 seconds, hit a big three. Um, and Moody, for people who aren't aware, he's 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, but he has a seven foot one wingspan. So with, with those three players getting a good run in game three and then not seeing them hardly at all in game four, I personally think that's the difference. And 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 why Kerr has this aversion, that's something I hope someone asked him because I'm really puzzled by it. What is it going to take, Cyrus, here for, for this Warriors team to win a game in Sacramento? Because they're still up against the wall where they've got to win a road game if they want to be able to come away from this series and move on to the next round. Absolutely. Um, I... The one of uh, the one thing I I noticed immediately, and we started today's post game locked on Warriors, uh, with this the idea that this is the first game in this whole series where the Kings are facing a, a must win situation. I mean, the the I don't know if the Warriors are in that position. I mean, the Warriors, even if they lose, they have Game Six at home, and then it becomes a must win for both teams. But for the Sacramento Kings, if you lose Game Five. You're facing a game six in Chase Center where hardly anyone can beat the Warriors. The Warriors won 33 games at Chase Center this year, uh, two better than last year, I think, when they won the championship. So um, this is the first time in the series where th there is legitimate pressure on Sacramento. Um, and I think that's incredibly advantageous for the defending champs who have been in these situations before. They've been, even though they've never faced a 2 0 deficit, like you alluded to at the beginning, which is very true. And, uh, and, and that does stick out, but they've faced a few. 2-1 deficits like that that is comfortable territory for them and especially now that it's 2-2 this is very familiar territory whereas for the kings they're completely inexperienced so uh you know with the exception of think maybe malik monk and uh, some other bench players but harrison barnes obviously um but for again the pressure is on the kings and i think the warriors like that i mean if they're going to enter a road game in any scenario i would imagine the best case scenario is with the other team's backs against the wall. And that's where the Sacramento Kings find themselves. Because again, if they lose game five, the Warriors will finish this uh, at Chase Center in game six. So curious to see if the Warriors take advantage of that or if we see this Kings team that um, really stepped it up in games one and two. What's one adjustment you expect to see in game five of the series, Cyrus, from either side? Could be Warriors or it could be something maybe that the Kings might try. Well, the Kings did something uh, today that they've been doing routinely through this series, but... Uh, sometimes it's really effective. Sometimes it's not that effective. And that's uh, going to this box in one defense where uh, Davion Mitchell is the is the one and and Mitchell shadows Stephen Curry and, and plays a man and the rest of the team is in his own. Um, so Steph is routinely doubled in these scenarios. Uh, but Steph is has sometimes it bothers him a little bit. But for the most part, I, it's just it's been really impressive in, in the way he's been able to overcome that. Um, so. I don't know if that's something the Kings will continue to do, um, you know, but in terms of adjustments, what I'd like to see, and I don't know if we will see it, is Kerr looking back at the game three box score, the one game where it was a blowout win, and, and remembers that he has three long athletic players on his roster who can really deliver for him uh, in Kaminga, Moody, and Jamichael. So uh, that's the adjustment I hope to see, because if we see that, I am confident the Warriors will overcome uh, the road difficulties that they faced all year and, and, and win in game five so they can close it out in game six. For an in-depth breakdown of this game and all the postseason action, you'll have us covered over at Locked On Warriors. Cyrus, I appreciate you not by Locked On me, NBA with me. Oh, dude, anytime, I'm here for you, man. Thanks, Jackson. Great to see you.